Hey, it's Monday, August 28th. We're going to be reading today in Acts chapter 4, and we're going to be reading Peter and John had just been um, released from prison, we know, and so we are going to read what their response is. I lost my page. I'm turning there. Um, so this is what they pray upon their release. It says, on their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. They're praying together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. They're recognizing God's holiness and sovereignty. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through whom who the mouth of your servant, our father, David. Why did the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So again, this is Peter and John, they've just been released from prison. And so they're asking now, this is their prayer, they're saying, okay, consider consider their threats. Like they're recognizing first and foremost that Jesus, that Jesus had these threats. They're saying, okay, you know, that they conspired against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and your will had decided beforehand should happen. So they recognize God's sovereignty. And now they're saying, okay, now consider their threats to us. Because here they've been released from prison, but they were threatened that you will not speak the word of God. You're not going to speak the name of Jesus anymore. But yet they know, of course, that's what they're called to do is speak the name of Jesus. So they're saying, now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. This is their prayer. They're not, they're not asking take their threats away. They're not asking hide us from it. No, they're saying, okay, enable us to rise up in boldness, to speak your word with great boldness. They don't want any other boldness, but other than the authority of the word of God. And they're saying, okay, now stretch out your hand and you perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And so then it says, after they prayed, after they prayed and asked this, they humble themselves. They're recognizing God's sovereignty. They're saying, you made the heavens and the earth. You are all powerful. Your holy servant, Jesus, went through this same thing that we are going through. Now consider their threats. Enable us. Enable us to just keep pressing on, Lord, in what you've asked us to do in great boldness. So they're not asking for it to be taken away. They're saying, okay, enable us to speak your word with great boldness and perform, Lord, then you perform your word with signs and wonders and miracles. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So God answered with exactly what they were praying for. They were asking to speak the word of God in boldness. Now, what did, what did happen? The Holy Spirit came. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And then they were able to work to, to speak the word of God with boldness. It's only the Holy Spirit in us that can speak the word of God with boldness. It's, it's the spirit of God in us mixed with the word of God. You know, we can know the word of God, but not have the boldness of speaking the word of God apart from the Holy Spirit. We have to, we have to tap into the Holy Spirit inside of us, the power of the Holy Spirit. Let his power rise up in great boldness through the word of God, because that's the only thing that can be a covering and a protection. You know, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the evil rulers of this world to be living in very dark times. And we know that, just look around the entire world. Um, but we know that the Holy Spirit will enable us to speak the word of God with great boldness and that signs and wonders and miracles will accompany 
the word of God, just like Mark 16, Jesus said that that would happen. And so here they're just praying God's words back to him and the Holy Spirit does exactly what they're praying because they're praying in line with the word of God. So let's pray for that for our days and our families and our children and our loved ones around us. Heavenly Father, we just, we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you are all powerful. We thank you, Jesus, that you died and made a way for us to enter into the most holy place, your presence. And you made a way for the Holy Spirit to come for us. You went and sent the Holy Spirit back so that the Holy Spirit could live inside of us to remind us of everything you, Jesus, taught us. So we just come right now and we ask Holy Spirit that you would enable us to speak the word of God with great boldness, that we would know the word of God, that we would let the word of God rise up in us and speak the word with your power, Jesus, with your boldness, and that you would shake the world around us and shake off everything not of you through your spirit, through your word. Help us to stand firm in these times by the power of your spirit and your word. In Jesus' name, amen.